Welcome back to this channel. This device that you see here is a high voltage inverter that is found in newer microwave ovens. Basically, this came out of a broken Panasonic microwave oven. And this unit replaces the bulky and heavy uh, traditional microwave oven transformer. And as you can see here, there are some uh, visible components that I can figure out. So there's a ceramic resistor, a couple of little components here, these two things, these are basically optocouplers. These separate a low voltage segment of this circuit from the high voltage segment, which is this transformer here, which consists of a primary consisting of multiple turns of Litz wire and a secondary consisting of multiple turns of thinner wire. And it looks like there is a second feedback loop right here. So this acts, this works as a classic flyback driver and it uses one transistor instead of two. You can have flyback transistor uh, drivers that work off of either one or two transistors. This transistor turns out to be a fairly high-end, high-power IGBT module. And then the rectified mains goes in here, is rectified, and is then smoothed by some capacitors. And this resistor here, what this does is it takes uh, power from the mains, the rectified power, and this is used to drive the driver circuitry, which I'm going to show you in a minute. You can't actually see the driver circuitry on this side of the board, so I'm going to unscrew this board with these screws here and here and uh, show you the back of the board. Hang on a second. Before I lift the board completely up, let me just show you a couple more things. This is an RF blocking choke. So this stops RF from getting back into the mains outlet. These two capacitors are high voltage capacitors, which make up part of a voltage doubler. So the output of this flyback, which typically operates around 20 to uh, 20 to 30 kilohertz, goes into the, these two high voltage rectifiers, which then function as a voltage doubler with these two capacitors. So you typically see anything from four to six kilovolts coming out of these high voltage wires. This thing can pass approximately 500 to 1000 watts of power through it, just using this one IGBT, so that with minimal generation of heat. So this thing is operating at zero voltage switching, which, which means that this IGBT generates very, very little heat when it switches. So now let's turn the board over and I'm going to show you the back of the board. Make sure that this thing is unplugged and make sure that the capacitors, i.e. these capacitors here and these capacitors here are completely discharged before you touch anything. So the back of the board has another separate circuit on it and the driver IC which is this surface mounted IC right here. This does all of the logic work for this board right here. And then the signal that comes out of this is then fed into this flyback to allow it to oscillate at its resonant frequency. Now, there are certain conditions to get these things to work. There are three wires that come off here and a guy by the name of Polson has described this in his video where I learned how to do this. Basically, he clearly describes what these three wires are for. So you've got, let me describe the wires. You've got your, your mains input here. It doesn't really matter which way around you put the live and neutral because it gets rectified anyway. You've got your ground here, which goes to this grounding terminal here. And then you have your high voltage output right here via these two. And this gives you high voltage DC output. And you have your um, these three wires. So let me go over these three wires. You have a yellow wire, which is your square wave pulse modulated signal that runs this thing. You have an orange lead, which has to have some kind of signal on it. It can't be 
left to float. Uh, and Paulson, in his video, said that it's okay to connect this to the ground via a 10, uh, via a 1K resistor, which I've done here. So here's my ground plate. Here's my 1K resistor connected to the orange wire. Now the brown wire is connected directly to ground. If you uh, put any old frequency on this, the thing won't start. So you have to have 220 hertz frequency, and I'm going to achieve that with a signal generator. And then you have to have a duty cycle that can't be above 43% in order for this thing to start. If the duty cycle is higher than 43%, then it's, it's basically not, it's, it's not going to work. So you have to have it at 43% or less. Another condition is this uses TTL logic. So things like 3.3 volts to 5.1 volts will work. You don't want anything below 3 volts, 3.3 volts. It won't work. And so you have to make sure that the signal that you put into this thing from your signal generator is somewhere between 3.3 and 5.1 volts. So uh, uh, let's get it connected up and see if it works. Okay, here's my signal generator. I have a square wave output, which is number two on here. And then I have 220 hertz. Let's adjust that. And then I have five volts amplitude. And my duty cycle, which is this, is turned way down. So it's probably around 20% duty cycle. And I've connected the input of the signal generator. So I have the red wire, which is the positive of the signal generator, going into this yellow wire. The black, which is the negative of the signal generator, goes to the ground. The orange is connected to a 1K resistor to the ground. And the brown goes directly to the ground. And there's no power on the unit yet. Here's my high voltage, high tension wires, which are kind of near to each other. I'm going to space them apart. I doubt it'll arc, but I, you know we'll find out. This thing can, should be able to generate from 4 to 6K kilovolts. So this turns the power on. I don't hear anything happening, no buzzing. I've got a little tiny neon bulb here. I'm going to put that. Not seeing any sign of the neon bulb lighting up. Now I'm going to crank up the duty cycle. So here it goes. And I can smell a little bit of ozone. So the unit is now live. And let's just put this little neon bulb and see what happens. There you go. These wires are definitely live. Polson did it by using a 555 chip, which generated square waves. Uh, I saw another video where someone did this using an Arduino. So there are different ways of running these. I'm taking the lazy way and just using a signal generator. I think this thing will make a great high voltage power supply. I've seen put people put these in project boxes. Thanks for watching. Sorry for the delay in putting any new videos on, but uh, been kind of busy and uh, had a lot of other distractions.